Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about coenzyme A biosynthesis. So we've all heard about coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is required for several biochemical processes. Some of these processes include metabolism of carbohydrates and fatty acids, and other processes include degradation of vitamins. Now, coenzyme A is derived from pantothenic acid or vitamin B5. And what is also required is the amino acid cysteine. We'll talk about how pantothenic acid and cysteine are repurposed and processed into coenzyme A in the next slide. So where do we get our vitamin B5? Well, it comes from our diet. So some of the dietary sources of vitamin B5 include egg yolk, liver, kidney, broccoli, milk, and other types of meats. And we can also get vitamin B5 from ingesting coenzyme A. So we could get coenzyme A from our diet, and then our body will actually hydrolyze the coenzyme A in small intestines to vitamin B5, and then we can actually take that vitamin B5 and then reprocess it back into coenzyme A. And another important source of vitamin B5 includes bacterial production of vitamin B5. Now, if we look at the structure of coenzyme A, this portion of the coenzyme A molecule that I'm circling here is what's represented in pantothenic acid or pantothenate. So if you can think about in this image here, this is actually just flipped. So this hydroxyl group here is actually here. Here is a Another hydroxyl group here is these two methyl groups here. So this is the portion of the molecule whereby it actually is derived from pantothenate. And we'll also talk about where these other portions of coenzyme A come from in the next slide. So it all starts with pantothenate. We get pantothenate from our diet, those dietary sources we talked about in the last slide. Pantothenate gets acted on by the enzyme pantothenate kinase. Now, it's a kinase, which means that it phosphorylates pantothenate. And that phospho group actually comes from ATP. And in the process, the phospho group is taken off of the ATP, added on to pantothenate to give us 4-phosphopantothenate, and we get the byproduct ADP. So you can see here that this is the phospho group that's been added. Now the next enzyme that acts on 4-phosphopantothenate is phosphopantothenoyl cysteine synthetase. This actually takes the amino acid cysteine. This is the step whereby we actually use the amino acid cysteine. So the second step in the pathway is where cysteine comes into play. We also use ATP in this process. Now, this process then leads us to essentially adding the backbone of cysteine onto 4-phosphopentothenate to give us 4-phosphopentothenoyl cysteine. The ADP or the ATP is actually hydrolyzed into an inorganic phosphate and an ADP. And this is where cysteine has been added to the molecule. So we can see here that we are actually um, increasing the size of this molecule as we go along in the process. Now, the next process takes place is that once we have 4-phosphopantothenoyl cysteine, it gets acted on by the enzyme phosphopantothenoyl cysteine decarboxylase. So a decarboxylase enzyme removes a CO2. So it decarboxylates 4 phospho n pantothenoyl cysteine to give us 4 phospho pantothene. And that CO2 actually comes from this portion of the molecule here. So we've actually essentially removed this section of the molecule, releasing a CO2, and this is what we have left over. So, and here is it circled. This is the uh, 
carboxyl group that's actually removed. So once we have 4-phosphopentathene, it can be acted on by the enzyme 4-phosphopentathene adenyl transferase. So adenyl transferase, in the name itself, explains what this enzyme does. It transfers an adenosine group to the phosphopentathene. And that adenosine group actually comes from ATP. So what happens is, in this process, we actually remove the adenosine portion of ATP along with a phospho group, and we essentially add it on to 4-phosphopantothene to give us d phospho coenzyme A, or d phospho coa And in the process, we're left with the byproduct um, pyrophosphate. So essentially what this step does is it actually adds an AMP, or adenosine monophosphate, to 4 phosphopantothene to give us this product, d phospho coenzyme A. And this is actually added on to this portion of the molecule. So if we take a look here, this portion of ATP is actually added on to the phospho group in 4-phosphopantothene. Um, so it's an AMP being added on, and this is what we have as a product. So once we have d coenzyme A, we're getting pretty close to the end product at this point. It gets acted on by the enzyme d coenzyme A kinase. Again, it's a kinase. It adds a phospho group to the d coenzyme A. So this phospho group actually gets added on to the five-membered ring here to give us a phospho group attached here. And this is essentially what is coenzyme A. So in the process of all of these steps, what have we used to actually make coenzyme A? So there's been several things. One, we used one molecule of a pantothenic acid or vitamin B5. In the entire process, we used four ATP. A few of them got added on as phosphor groups. One had to be used as an energy source. And another um, thing that we needed was uh, the amino acid cysteine. So all of these precursors, pantothenic acid, ATP, and cysteine are required to produce coenzyme A. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. This was a lesson on coenzyme A biosynthesis. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.